at the outset. to express my surprise that you, as President of the General Assembly, have rejected seeking an independent legal opinion on whether the call to convene this meeting satisfies the uh, rules governing the procedures of this General Assembly. I am also surprised that you have chosen to impose your position on this August Assembly despite calls from several delegations to the contrary. This runs counter to the uh, principle of democracy under which we all work. Mr. President, for the first time in my career as a professional diplomat, for the past 33 years, having personally uh, uh, participated as ambassador of my country in Geneva, in the creation of the Human Rights Council, for the first time, I see an important personality, the High Commissioner for Human Rights, taking on a clear accusation against my country as having violated human rights based, as Her Excellency is said, quoting reports, as she stated dozens of times in her statement, reports, not conclusions from visits or dialogue on the ground with the Syrian government or cooperation with the National Investigating Committee set up by the Syrian government uh, to investigate the events. After today, how can we trust the High Commissioner uh, for Human Rights on issues related to defending and promoting human rights while, regrettably, she chooses to take a negative, inimical position, one that is unprincipled against the Syrian government. My delegation would like to state that the main reason for the continuation of the regrettable situation in Syria is the absence of a valid legal international environment that, in taking up that situation, proceeds from respect of the Charter of the United Nations, international law, the principles of the sovereignty, territorial integrity, and political independence of states and non-intervention in their internal affairs, as if these important terms are now being heard by some for the very first time, as if all the provisions of the Charter of the United Nations are no longer in force. And we are now uh, to redraft new provisions that uh, turn the provisions uh, set by the Founding Fathers of the United Nations some 65 years ago on their head. Some Arab, regional and international circles have chosen to wage a media, political and diplomatic war against my country. I'm saying a war, not a campaign. 
when those circles took on aggressive, illegitimate positions whose main objective is to undermine the pillars of governance in Syria, not to reform governance in Syria through the use of force, threatening the use of force, imposing unilateral economic sanctions outside international legitimacy, and a hysterical siege on a founding member of this international organization without paying the slightest heed to the provisions of its charter. The High Commissioner of Human Rights spoke of uh, tragic conditions that some Syrians are living. Indeed, she is right. This is true. However, she neglected to say what are the genuine reasons that led to that situation. She did not take up uh, harsh unilateral economic sanctions, Arab, regional and international, against Syria, as if she had not heard of those sanctions, as if she had not heard of the uh, embargo. Mr. President, on February 10th of this year, in one day, in one day, in the city of Aleppo, 28 people were killed, 235 others were wounded because of two suicide terrorist bombs targeting innocent civilians in an urban area next to a kindergarten, a food distribution center, and security headquarters. The Syrian capital itself on 6 December 2000 and uh, January rather 2012 had suffered a suicide bombing in a highly populated area with many passers-by that led to the martyrdom of 26 citizens and the wounding of 63. Before both, on the 23rd of December of last year, the Syrian capital Damascus also suffered two other suicide bombings against two government targets in an area crowded with passers-by. Those suicide bombings led to 50 martyrs among innocent civilian and military persons, and more than 200 injured. Suicide bombings, we know, are a specialty of Al-Qaeda, an organization that I believe we had all agreed in this organization to condemn. The names of its leaders are inscribed on a list in the Security Council. I hope none of us have forgotten this. Particularly when we know that a US media outlet, McClatchy Washington Bureau, yesterday published an important report stating that Al-Qaeda was responsible for the suicide bombings in Damascus and Aleppo. I would hope that the High Commissioner for Human Rights will perhaps cite that in her next statement. Ladies and gentlemen, Syria to date has suffered thousands of innocent civilian victims as price 
for its attempt to restore security and stability uh, to the country in exercise of its exclusive right to protect its citizens. Every sovereign state, every sovereign state represented here bears the exclusive responsibility to protect in its citizens. We in Syria could not imagine sending soldiers to defend, occupy Wall Street protesters. Neither we or any other government can imagine sending forces to protect demonstrators in London or Paris. The state has exclusive responsibility for defending security on its national territory. This is known to all, ladies and gentlemen. It is known that armed groups are daily committing assassinations against academics and thinkers, intellectuals in all parts of Syria, in all parts of Syria, just as they did in Iraq to destroy the foundation of the state. That is the objective, to undermine the foundation of the Syrian state towards creative chaos. And then we'll have humanitarian corridors because after all we have no state. Then buffer zones because there is no state. Then a no-fly zone because there is no state. That is the objective, to show the Syrian state as unable to protect its own citizens on its own territory. The vast losses in Syria among civilians and security forces is a deep wound. We are sad, but we place the responsibility for those losses at the door of those who are attempting to obtain political interests by using Syrian blood as currency. And I would say to those, stop killing my people, stop your plots against Syria, help the Syrian people, help the Syrian government to combat terrorism and to satisfy legitimate demands from the people for reform. Help us to carefully listen to the demands of peaceful protesters. It is their right. We want your help to realize that right on the ground. Without the use of force, without embargoes. Mr. President, the issue of combating terrorism has become front and center at the United Nations Organization, whether in the Security Council or the General Assembly. We have had it on their agendas for many years, an attempt to build international consensus on combating terrorism. That was crowned with the adoption of the United Nations Global Strategy to Combat Terrorism in 2006, and I would recall the efforts that were made in reaching adoption of that strategy. By its resolutions 1267 of 1999 and uh, 1989 of 2011, the Security Council set up a special committee to combat the terrorism of Al-Qaeda. The Security Council member states spent thousands of work hours to coordinate international efforts in considering how to confront the threats of this international terrorist organization. The question